Okay, can everyone hear me? About 10 minutes ago I learned you can't type a mic to your face if you have a beard. <laughs> cool, so my name is Ryan, and I want to tell you how and why to tell strangers on the internet about stuff you know. Now that's very vague. Am I going to tell you to comment on Stack Overflow? No. I'm going to tell you to use a lot of Twitter? No. Am I going to tell you to start up a blog? It's a great idea, but no. I want to tell you about a journey into online course creation. Now, before I get into the details, by a show of hands, does anyone know what Udemy is? Has anyone ever taken a course on Udemy? Keep your hands up. Great. Has anyone ever presented a course on Udemy? Not a single one. What have I finished? Hopefully I'll be able to change it after this session. So, what this is about, this is about my journey into online course creation and how anyone can share their skills, reach people all over the world, build their brand, and hopefully make some profit while they're at it. So I want to start with how I got you. I've been coding for a very long time, and somewhere along the way I figured out that I actually like sharing the knowledge that I've built up over the years with other people. So a couple of years ago, I decided that I wanted to start a business, and I wanted to teach people how to code and you know, make a little side business out of that. So I made a website. And I spent a couple of months and I learned some JavaScript and Bootstrap and did cool things and it was a lot of fun. And by the end of it, I had something that I thought was going to be really awesome and I was going to sell it to people from all corners of the earth and make a lot of money in the process. Except there was one thing that I did not realize at that point. And that thing is that I suck at marketing. <laughs> so I had all this content, which was great, and I had a couple of students and some people signed up but it was never really enough for it to turn into a successful business. So where I was at that point is I had all this content. All I needed was to find someone who would actually be interested in it, into Udemy. So Udemy has students. Udemy has the means to reach them. Now, I've taken courses on Udemy in the past, and I know how their business model works. So it's not like edX or Coursera, where you have courses presented by academics. Anyone can teach on Udemy about anything they want. So if you think about it, it's like eBay, but for education. So I started working on converting the material that I had to Udemy, which was a bit of a long journey because I had everything in text and on a website, but for Udemy, you need to use videos. But a couple of months down the line, I launched my first free Udemy course, which was an introduction to programming using Java, which was the material from my little side business that didn't quite work out. And it was amazing because almost overnight, I attracted hundreds of students. What I then realized, though, is that free students generally don't have high engagement ratios. People tend to hoard courses and not do anything with them, which doesn't make sense, but they do it. So then, around about May 2017, I converted that course to a paid course as a little experiment to see what would happen. Now, again, there was something I didn't take into account. Udemy has a lot of Java courses on Kareti. And if you're a student, who are you going to give your money to? This guy who's got an established track record and hundreds of great reviews, or the new guy no one knows about? So there's a bit of a barrier to entry there. But at the same time, I started working on a course on using solid principles, which is something that I like and I feel quite strongly about that and sharing other people or helping other people to do that as well. So that went live in May 2017. Then in August, I launched a course on fluent API design. Now, when I created this presentation, that was my highest rated course, but it didn't sell very well. And I'll tell you why. <coughs> right. So the first course was an experiment. I wanted to see how Udemy works. The second two courses were things that I enjoy, but that, that is not necessarily high student demand for. So no one wakes up in the morning and goes, I want to learn about fluent APIs today. It just doesn't work like that. Interestingly, someone else launched the course on solid principles a couple of months after I launched mine. But they were clever. They put the words software architecture in the title. And now suddenly it's something everyone's interested in, and they ended up actually doing really, really well. So based on that, I started looking at the tools that Udemy provides to give you insight into student demand. And from that, I created a course on UML, which is a very popular topic. So that one's still brand new. I launched it at the beginning of this month, but I'm hoping that it'll turn into one of my best selling courses, simply due to demand. So I've given you the backstory of how I got you. I want to show you some numbers. So my world, in terms of online teaching, 
I'm currently sitting on just over 3,000 students from 119 different countries. And even though Udemy isn't making me rich just yet, I'm generating about $100 a month in passive income, which if you think about it is really cool because you're not actively working on it. You create these courses, you take them live, they sit there, they earn money for you. So that's pretty cool. In terms of my students, I've got some more detailed statistics. 22% of my students come from the States, 12% from India, surprisingly 10% from Poland. I never realized how big the IT industry in Poland is. 6% from Thailand and 3% from Brazil. The rest are sp spread across the globe. Now there's a very interesting lesson to take away from that because it's a very diverse audience. But before I get to that, I've showed you what my world looks like. I want to give you an idea of the bigger world in terms of online education. So this is from the press section on Udemy's website. They currently have 20 million students, 65,000 courses, and 30,000 instructors. Now this is only looking at Udemy. It's not looking at Pluralsight, Skillshare, or any of the other platforms that compete with them. It's also not taking into account platforms like edX and Coursera, where courses are pre presented by recognized academic institutions, not by people like me and you. So from there, I've gathered some more statistics, and that's getting interesting. Top monthly revenue by topic for courses. So in other words, the courses in a certain category, most money that is generated in a single month. We're looking at almost $40,000 in a single month for Java courses. I don't know why it's so high. It's definitely an outlier, but it does seem to indicate that Java is popular. For .NET, it got up to almost $3,000. Agile was around about $8,000. And then photography and marketing strategy, pretty impressive numbers as well. The reason I included the final two is just to give you an idea that you don't have to teach about technical content. You can teach about pretty much anything that you want. In fact, they even have courses on coffee. Right, so what have I learned? I've actually learned quite a lot since I started on this journey. So when you try to teach someone something that you know, and you have to take this knowledge that you've accumulated over the years, a lot of the things that come natural to you and that you take for granted, you have to really break it back down to the basics in order to explain it to someone. So you know if you're writing code and you're sitting there in your IDE and you hit that little green play button, and the compiler goes off and does stuff, what does it actually do? If you want to teach a beginner, you have to be able to break it down right to the basics in order to tell someone else what it does. Now the way in which that forces you to think about problems is really like rubber ducking on a grand scale. The next thing that I've learned, teaching forces you to learn how to communicate better. And the reason that is, is because you keep on repeating things over and over and over again. So you'll create a video and you watch it, you review yourself which is a luxury that you don't get when you're communicating with someone directly. So it seems pretty harsh because you're constantly reviewing yourself, picking out your mistakes, but in the process, it allows you to grow. On that note, I found that when I record lectures, it's just so much easier if I script it out up front and I know what I'm going to say. In addition, imposter syndrome. I think Yanku touched on that in his talk as well. Is anyone familiar with imposter syndrome and what it is? So it's very real. And it's that thing that causes you to question yourself and your worth. Because it comes down to, what do I have to offer? Can I really teach anyone something that they will benefit from? Do I sound silly on video? Should I even go to DevConf and talk about this? Well, the one thing that I've found that helps you to come over that initial barrier is if you think about it, chances are, somewhere in the world, there's at least one person who knows less about something than you do. So do it for them. Use that as your motivation to get started. And then once your reviews start rolling in and you get some good reviews, you realize that people actually care about what you have to say. And that's very inspiring. Now, of course, once in a while you do get bad reviews. I had someone tell me that my introductory course was basic. It's like, yes, of course it's basic. <laughs> and if that happens, brush it off, move on. It's, it's not the norm, it's definitely an exception. The next thing, so I've spoken about the very diverse audience that I have. Not everyone is a native English speaker. And what that means is if someone is watching this content that you've created, they have to contend with your pronunciation, with your accent, with the speed at which you talk. And that can be very difficult. So providing subtitles just makes it so much easier for people to understand. 
And the one thing to keep in mind is no matter how good your content is, if people can't understand what you're trying to get across, all that value is lost. So if I have tempted anyone to consider trying to do this, to get started, here's a couple of things that you'll need. So because you'll spend time talking to people, you'll need something to record that with, a microphone of some sort. Let's use my iPhone. It works well for me. Um, you'll also need a camera, especially if you want to do talking head type videos. Now, personally, I would recommend that you do that if you want to create a course, because as soon as your students see you physically, instead of just hearing your voice, it becomes much easier for them to relate to you. You'll also need screen recording software, depending on what you do. A lot of my courses are like recordings of my IDE and presentations and stuff like that. Um, you'll need presentation software, so your PowerPoint, your Keynote, whatever works for you. I like to use Keynote. And you'll need audio and video editing software. You won't believe how incredibly difficult it is to record good audio. There's always background noise and buzzing and something else that's going to irritate you. Audacity is a very good and completely free tool for dealing with that. And believe it or not, to tie it all together at the end, I use Windows Movie Maker. It's basic, but it works. Great, so on my journey, where do I want to go from here? So I've started on this journey, and I've enjoyed it, but there's still a long way to go. So from here, I want to continue creating courses and learning in the process. So learning about myself, learning about the things that I teach, learning how to engage with people. I also want to reach more students. So I have students in 119 different countries. There are almost 200 countries globally. So there's a lot of room to grow and a lot of people to reach. In addition, as it's not, like I said, making me rich just yet, I want to try and grow my passive income through Udemy to $2,000 a month by the end of this year. Now, looking at what other instructors have accomplished, that is well within reach. And like I said, looking at the figures I showed earlier, the peer-to-peer -peer online education industry, if I can call it that, is huge. And I think it's something worth getting into. In addition, um, if anyone thinks that this is really cool and there's a company out there who'd be keen on starting up a user group around this, please get in touch and let's chat. So if I can leave you with one single thing to take away from this presentation, and if you want to tweet something, this is it. Opportunity awaits. You have something worth sharing. You can reach the world, and getting started isn't all that difficult. So just do it. So in the time that we have left, um, are there any questions? If we do run out of time, you can chat to me afterwards. You'll probably find me somewhere close to coffee. <coughs> yeah. Are there, uh, well, what have you found with the length of your course? Is it worth doing like a really short course of three sessions on something very specific? Have you experimented with long versus short? So they have a recommendation, or rather a hard restriction, that you need at least 30 minutes of video content for a course. When I started doing this, I kind of tried to follow lean principles. So I want to get something valuable out as soon as possible. So most of my courses are between an hour and two hours. Based on how their algorithms work, longer courses do tend to get preference when people do searches but they just take so much longer to create. So I try and get things out quickly so I can get feedback on that as mm -hmm. soon as possible. So just to, to expand on that, I don't actually have metrics on it, but my gut feel, based on what I found, to record five minutes of video content, I think it takes about three hours of work. Sure. Yes? Uh, what is Udemy's sort of cost structure? Do they charge per subscription or so you pay per course, and then they've got a revenue sharing model with instructors. So if they sell your course via their own organic marketing, you get 50%. If they sell your course via a course coupon that you created, you get 97% of the revenue. And then they've also got an ad program, an affiliate program. Yes? The payment, is it um, assuming it's PayPal? Or yeah, it's PayPal. So it depends on how the courses are sold. If they sell it via their own organic marketing, you get 50%. If they sell it via the ad or affiliate programs, you get 25%. If they sell it via one of their 
or one of your own coupons that you as an instructor created, you get 97%. But the benefit that I got from moving to something like Udemy, even though the revenue share is much lower than it would have been if I had sold it directly via my own platform, the volume more than makes up for that. Any more questions? Thank you very much.